everybody. I'm Jake. I'm really sorry if I look or sound funny today. My shirt's really tight, and I'm afraid if I breathe out, I'll pop a button. I gotta breathe. <sighs> today, I'm gonna talk to you about humility. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. One of the ways I like to put... One of the ways I like to put others first... <sighs> so you're probably thinking that the smart thing to do would be to change shirts. Well, I already tried that, but none of my shirts fit today, or any of my clothes. At first I thought maybe I had gained a little weight. I mean, I have been eating a lot of mustard-filled donuts lately, but even my shoes don't fit, and I don't think I gained any weight in my feet. Almost got it, almost. Or my head. I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> Wait a second. I bet one of my friends is playing another April Fool's Month surprise on me. <laughs> they switched all my clothes with smaller versions of my clothes. Man, that's elaborate. I gotta do something now. That's the rules of April Fool's Month. Somebody does something to me, I've got to do something back. Something big. Something that's never been done before. I'll put a bucket of confetti over the door. So whoever walks through will get a bucket of confetti all over them. Yeah, Jake, you're a genius. Nope. Easy, boy. So, today's story is about how we should treat people like they're more important than we are. I can't wait to try that after I prove to everyone that I'm the best at April Fool's Month surprises! Yeah! Oh, oh. How many buttons does this thing have? The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Philippians, chapter two, verses three through eight. Jesus' life and death and resurrection changed the way everything works. It changed how we view others and how we treat them. One of Jesus' followers, a man named Paul, wrote about it in a letter to believers in Philippi. Don't do anything only to get ahead. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. As you deal with one another, you should think and act as Jesus did. Jesus was equal with God, but Jesus didn't take advantage of that fact. Instead, he made himself nothing. He did this by taking on the nature of a servant. He appeared as a man. He was humble and obeyed God completely. He did this even though it led to his death. Let's imagine how this truth might play out today. Angus McCrane had been up since 5.30 a.m. for his job as a school bus driver. After three morning routes, he skipped lunch to clean out throw up and a spilled soda from the back of his bus. Yuck. Then there were three afternoon routes and a whole stack of paperwork waiting for him at the bus garage at the end of the day. So by the time Angus got home, he was starving. He couldn't wait to dig into this delicious ribeye he'd picked up. Mmm. <laughs> Gonna fire up that grill right away. While the grill heated, Angus prepared a baked potato and sauteed green beans. A little salt, a little lemon. Doo -doo -doo. Then he seared the steak to perfection and slid it on his plate alongside the fluffy baked potato and crisp green beans. Ooh. Ah, thank you, Lord Jesus, for this food. Amen. Angus sliced off a corner of the sizzling steak and skewered it with his fork. Ah. <laughs> but before he could take a bite, oh, for goodness sake, with a regretful glance at his steak, Angus headed over to his front door and opened it. His new chipper neighbor Marge stood there, holding an enormous Siamese cat. Hello, Marge. I am so sorry to barge in, but I just found out about a super last minute work trip 
And I don't have anyone to watch Boris while I'm gone. Angus just stared at the cat. And the cat stared back, smugly, as if he knew Angus hated cats. Well, I, I gotta tell you, I, you know, I've never been around cats much. Oh, that's no problem. I've got everything you'd need right here. Angus looked past Marge to see several bags and boxes, plus an entire carpeted climbing tree. So, could you do it? Angus glanced sadly at his quickly cooling steak, but he could see Marge was a little desperate. Well, okay. It took Marge nearly 10 minutes to explain every little detail of Boris the Cat's care. Finally, Angus was alone again with his steak. And Boris. Yeah, better keep those fuzzy paws away from my dinner, you hear me? But before Angus could take a bite! Ah, oh, what on earth? Angus jumped up and hurried over to the side window. He could see exactly what had happened. Ah, oh, that boy. Zachary Kircher was a kid who lived next door. He loved sports, but didn't have good aim. He'd already dented Angus's car with a baseball and destroyed a patch of petunias playing soccer. And this time, it was a rogue football that had hit the window. Huh. At least it didn't break the glass. Angus saw Zachary scrambling to recover the football and make his escape, but as he tried to hop the fence, he stumbled. Huh. Serves him right. When Zachary got up, Angus could clearly see that he'd badly gashed his knee. Angus sighed, thought mournfully about his steak, and opened the window. Zachary! Oh, sorry, Mr. McCrane, I I'm leaving. No, 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 just hold on a minute. We gotta clean up that knee. So Angus grabbed his handy dandy first aid kit and headed outside. It took another 10 minutes to clean out all the dirt from Zachary's scrape and get it all bandaged up. And finally, Angus sat down to dinner again for the third time. His steak was barely warm. Uh, I am so hungry I could eat the entire cow. But before he could take a bite. Oh, that don't sound good. Angus ran to the front window. It appeared that the neighborhood ice cream truck had swerved to avoid Zachary, who had ran into the road to chase his football. Big no-no. And now that truck was listing sideways on a flat tire. <clears throat> You have got to be kidding me. <sighs> Angus opened the front door and headed down the sidewalk. The poor teenage driver was checking out the damage. It's my first day on the job. I wrecked the truck. They'll fire me. No, no, no. It's just a flat, son. You wait right here. <sighs> With a deep sigh, Angus headed back to his garage, grabbed his handy-dandy toolkit, and showed the young driver how to remove the flat tire and replace it with a spare. Thanks. I'd totally give you an ice cream sandwich, but they might fire me for giving stuff away. Angus wiped the grease off his hands as he watched the ice cream truck ramble down the street. Speaking of ice, his dinner must be stone cold by now. Excuse me? Angus jumped a mile to see Marge standing behind him. She was wearing oven mitts and holding a hot apple pie. Steam seeped from the cracks. I can't eat this since I've got to leave. I thought you might like it. Well, glory be. Angus inhaled the heavenly smell. Hmm. <sighs> First I interrupt your dinner, then you help that kid next door, and now changing a flat, you sure put others first. Ah, I don't generally feel like doing it, but uh, thank you. Angus happily accepted the apple pie. This time he would be putting dessert first while his dinner reheated in the oven. Now, it would have been a lot easier for Angus to just eat dinner and ignore the people around him who needed help. But little by little, God was helping him serve others, just like Jesus did. Okay, so the bucket of confetti is set. As soon as someone walks through the door, the bucket will fall and they'll get covered in confetti. But let me think for a second, because something doesn't quite fit right. I'm supposed to think and act like Jesus did when he was here. Well, how did he think and act? Jesus is like God's only son, but instead of staying in some big heavenly castle, he came here as a baby and then grew up serving people, helping people who are sick, teaching people who wanted to learn. Then he died for us and came back to life. So. 
How did Jesus think? He thought that people mattered a whole lot. And how did he act? He loved and served and gave up everything for people. Gave up what he deserved for me. And you know the rules. Somebody does something for me, I've got to do something back. So... So I took the confetti myself, so no one else would have to. I mean, it's not even a big deal. I like confetti. And these aren't even my clothes. Ugh. Ugh. Sometimes putting others first gets a little messy. But you know what? That's okay. You don't put others first because it's easy. You should put others first because that's what Jesus did for you. That's the one thing I learned today. Put others first because Jesus put you first. I'm gonna say that over and over again so I'll remember. Put others first because Jesus put you first. Put others first because Jesus put you first. Love others because Jesus loved others. Like your family, your friends, your brothers, your sisters, your mother, your gardener. Put others first because Jesus put you first. Man, I feel like brand new. It's like putting on a fresh pair of clothes, except clothes that actually fit. Ugh. I'm gonna need to change. I am getting confetti in my lungs. See you next time. Well, hey friends, it's Mr. Michael, and I hope that you are having a great weekend, and I really hope that this video finds you and your family healthy and doing well. I also hope that you really enjoyed today's video from our regular church school curriculum that we get to watch each time we're together at church. Hopefully it made you feel a little bit just like you were there. I know how much you're missing being at the church with your friends. And I hope you know how much we're missing being with you too. But I'm grateful that we get to be together this way each week. I'm also grateful that we get to continue through our month-long talk about that big word called humility, which really just means putting others first. And it's easy to say but it's not always easy to do, is it? We kind of learned that today from our host, Jake, and our friend, the bus driver, in our, in our Bible story movie, Mr. McCrane. And, you know, as they kind of showed us, in order to put other people first, sometimes that means that we have to give up something that we might really want or that we might really want to do, something that we've been really looking forward to. And that's not always easy, right? But did you hear our Bible story from the book of Philippians today? It showed us an amazing example of somebody who knew what humility and putting others first looked like better than anyone ever has. And that's Jesus. If there was ever anyone who had a right to, to, to put himself above everybody else, put himself first, it would be Jesus. After all, he was God's only son. But that's not the way Jesus lived, is it, friends? Jesus lived his life putting everybody first, showing kindness and love to, to everyone he met, whether he knew them or not. And he showed the ultimate love to each of us when he went to the cross for us and died and rose again three days later, like we just celebrated it at Easter. No one knew what it was like to put others first more than Jesus. But you know, friends, as I think about this really tough and scary time that we're going through right now, there are a lot of people who are showing what it's like to put others first. All of those people like the, the doctors and the nurses and the people who are working in the hospitals. And what about the people who are protecting us that are still putting themselves in danger, like the police officers and the people who are in the EMT ambulances who go to rescue people who are sick and need help? And I'll bet if you think about it together as a family, you can think of a lot more people that are going every day to their jobs, even though they're scared and it's a little scary, they're putting other people ahead of their own fears and the things that they're afraid of because they are showing humility just like Jesus did. 
And so I hope that you'll take some time with your family this week and talk about, make a big list of all of those people that are out putting others first right now, even though it's scary. And, and let's try to remember this week to pray for them together as a family and, and thank them for what they're doing and thank God for them. And we're going to do that right now. If you would fold your hands and bow your heads. And this week, I'm going to pray for you and your families and these other folks who are showing humility and putting others first. Will you pray with me? Dear God, I thank you for each of these children watching this video. I thank you for their families. Lord, please continue to watch over them and keep them safe and healthy. And Lord, we thank you for today's Bible story. We thank you for the way that you remind us how Jesus knew what it was like to put other people first. Help us to follow in his footsteps and to put others first in our lives, even when it means that we have to give up something that we really want or that we really want to do. And Lord God, thank you for the way that you have sent people in this really tough and scary time who show humility and put us first and the lives of so many first. We ask you to continue to be with all of these people who serve, our first responders and workers, doctors and nurses and workers in the hospitals and in the grocery stores and our police officers and EMTs and all of the other people who are putting others ahead of themselves so that we can all make it through this really tough time. Please watch out for them, Lord, and protect them and keep them safe too and their families as well. Lord God, thank you for loving us so much and for sending Jesus to show us what it means to put others first. We love you too, and we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I can't wait to hear about some of these other people that you come up with on your list together as a family that are putting others first right now. And in the meantime, know that we are missing and praying for you and we will continue to do that and we'll check in with you later on this week. Have a great rest of your weekend and we'll see you soon, friends. Bye-bye.